Welcome to the Biz Bash podcast, where we make biz strategy a piece of cake. I'm Elizabeth. And I'm Cammie, but you might know us better as Eliza and Calligraphy and Cammie Monet. We want to help you, our fellow stationers, artists, and calligraphers, confidently build a profitable and personality-driven creative biz. We're here to share our honest-to-goodness advice and actionable strategies for ambitious artists. So put on your party hat, quit being a procrastinator gator, and let's get this party started. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Biz Birthday Bash podcast. We are so excited to have our very first guest of 2021, Sakshi Karim Belker of Inquisited. You guys, Sakshi makes the most beautiful handmade paper. I was actually referred to her through a friend of mine, Rebecca, because I was asking around for handmade paper last year for a wedding that dun, 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 got postponed. No surprise there. <laughs> but I have a whole pile of Sakshi's beautiful handmade paper sitting on the shelf in my office for this wedding that's going to be next October. And this paper is just stunning, you guys. So we have not talked to anybody yet about handmade paper and what goes into that process because there's a reason why handmade paper is as expensive as it is, you guys. So without further ado, Sakshi, we are so excited to have you here with us today. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here too. You're welcome. I knew for a while now that I like wanted to have you on the podcast. It just took Obvi forever (laughs) for me to get around to sending the emails and getting all of it set Mm -hmm. up. And so if you could introduce yourself in your own words and tell a little bit about your story, like how you discovered your love for stationery, how you got here today, that would be really great. So our audience can get to know you a little better. Absolutely. So I actually started Inquisited as more of a creative outlet in 2018. And this was only a couple of months after I had graduated college. Um, I graduated in May of 2018. 18, and I had decided that my corporate job wasn't fulfilling my creative needs. And I feel like that's a story that a lot of creative entrepreneurs have. It's that they weren't fulfilled in all aspects of their life by their current job. I graduated from University of Illinois with a computer science degree. So I was doing something that was, you know, completely different from stationery, from the wedding industry. So Inquisited was a way for me to illustrate, for me to hand letter, just for me to find ways to enrich my life using my hands and create beautiful things that I otherwise was not able to do in my day-to-day job. That is amazing. I feel like some of the most talented creatives come from backgrounds that are very mathematic and scientific. So that's mm-hmm. really cool that your degree was computer science and you have added this basically to your life now as that outlet that you needed. Mm-hmm. Handmade paper specifically, I actually discovered completely by accident. I was scrolling through Instagram one day and I came across, I believe it was Share Studios and Farmet Paper. Yes. And I had never, <laughs> aren't they the best? I had never seen handmade paper before that single photo that I saw. And I was like, what is this magical piece of paper? I want it. I want to write on it. <laughs> and I immediately bought like an excessive amount of handmade paper. And of course, it was extremely difficult to write on the very first time I got it. But it was so beautiful that I just really put an effort to learn how to use it, to learn how to write on it. And when I discovered that it was something that you could technically do at home, that's when I really started to investigate how I could make my own and how I could do it in my little apartment because I was just fascinated with the entire process, the entire science behind it. And it took off from there. I love that you use the word investigate to say that you started pursuing your passion because I think a lot of people forget that when they stumble upon something creative, that there's research and investigation involved. And I can so appreciate that you took the time to do that, to really dive into your art, because I'm sure you get this a lot now being someone who makes paper on Instagram, having your DMs full of people who are like, how did you do that? Or how did you figure that out? And you're like, oh, yes, (laughs) I literally had to put so much time and effort behind the scenes into getting where I am. And it can't be narrowed down to a DM or a message to someone or even an email sometimes. That is absolutely correct. I'm going to start saying that to people. I'm going to start saying, you know what, you really need to investigate your craft because that is what's (laughs) going to get you a good start. (laughs) Mm -hmm. I know. And I think that's like such 
like a mark of your character and like a true creative is like you just see something you're like that's intriguing I'm gonna investigate and like just keep going down like it's like you just like pull on this like little tiny thread and then like all this stuff unravels and before you know it, you have a business of handmade paper making so it's like yeah I went and bought textbooks on yes I love this <laughs> the science behind it the just there's so much that when you look at a piece of paper you don't understand how much goes into it how much trial and error there is to get that specific style of paper to get that color to get that weight to get that texture even the smallest of changes in your process can significantly alter the outcome of your paper so if you just jump in without really looking into it really understanding all the nuances you're going to make not great pieces of paper and you're not going to understand why what you're making isn't as fabulous as Farmet or as Cher Studios, who, as you know, have completely different styles of paper, but they're both handmade mm-hmm. paper. I will be totally honest. I had a handmade paper phase in my apartment in like my second <laughs> we year We all of have a handmade paper phase, <laughs> don't we? <laughs> and I was like using just like old screens I found and my bathtub and a blender <laughs> I got from Goodwill. Y'all, it was a hot mess. Like, did I make handmade paper? Yes, I did. Was it anything worthy of being sold or used for a project? Really? No. <laughs> like, <laughs> Wait, And I started there too. The first, I still have the first batch of handmade paper I made. It's one of my prized possessions, even though it's just utter horrible pieces of paper. <laughs> They're not usable. They're, they're more like tissue paper than they are something you can write on. But yeah. it's where I started, and it's very significant to me nonetheless. That's so cool that you kept those. I, I don't even know if I have mine lying around anymore at this point. Mine was the opposite problem, that it was so thick that it was kind of like cardboardy oh. and like cardstock okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you, if you make recycled paper, it usually has that problem. Yeah, that's totally what I did is I had just shredded a bunch of old stuff and threw it in a blender and went from there. And (laughs) it was a mess. So my question for you, too, is other than these textbooks that you said you bought, which is amazing, there are so many books that have been written over decades that have so much knowledge. Besides those, were there other resources and places you went to help you figure out your craft? Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, Skillshare was a great one. They have a bunch of very beginner-friendly papermaking tutorials for if you don't know anything at all. Skillshare is a great option. Um, Share Studios actually also has a slightly more in-depth beginner's papermaking tutorial. So instead of just making recycled paper, she goes into how you can use professional-grade fibers at home to make your own paper. So a lot of beginners start with recycled paper in a blender. And I think I'll go a little bit into the process of how paper is made. But Mm -hmm. there aren't a lot of tutorials that talk about cotton or abaca. And I think that's where I learned a bit more about the nuances of paper making from Share Studio, Stephanie. Yes. Mm -hmm. Stephanie's paper is probably some of the first handmade paper I ever bought. Those deep blue envelopes that she makes. Oh, yeah. They're so gorgeous. Uh Uh-huh. Definitely one of my first purchases. And so you had mentioned sharing a little bit about the process of making paper. Can you give us a brief overview of the process for those in our audience who have no idea how it's done? And feel free to be as brief as you want to or as in-depth as you want to. Obviously, (laughs) you can't share Mm -hmm. everything. That would take way too much time. But it would be great to know some of the, the steps you have to take. Yeah, so handmade paper is taking natural fibers, chopping them up into small pieces, mixing them in water to create a pulp. And that pulp is what you use to make pieces of paper out of. So you use something called a mold and a decal. It's a two-part wooden screen. One side has a mesh on it, and one side is what has the shape of the paper on it. So you draw that wooden screen, that mold and decal, through a vat of water that is mixed with your pulp. And what's left on top of the screen, you press and dry. That's the very basics of it. 
You can do this at home using recycled paper and a mixer to create your pulp. Um, there's lots of great tutorials online how to make a very easy mold and decal using a picture frame or just plywood you might have lying around if you can cut it down and something like a window screen mesh. Or you can also get specific paper making mesh from retailers on Amazon or I like to use carriage house paper. They're my supplier for most of my paper making goods. And mm -hmm. they also have some mold and decals you can buy there as well. But a lot of it is just figuring out how to make the correct pulp, how to add the correct chemicals to the pulp so that it doesn't absorb water and become a paper towel, essentially. Um, oh my gosh. So when you first started with the paper making, were you just like in your bathtub basically? And like, do you still do that now? Like, I'm just. I need a visual. <laughs> this is actually <laughs> so for me personally, I'm somebody who really likes to do things right the first time. So what I did, I wasn't able to get a professional fiber beater. I was using my own mixer in my kitchen, but I got a paper making bat. It took over my dining room table for six to seven months before we moved into a bigger house. We <laughs> did not use a dining table because there was my paper making bat on it. I also invested in a proper dry box for drying the papers rather than just laying them out. I actually started out with cardboard and felts inside and then putting a fan behind them to try and get them to dry flat. So I had some elements that, you know, paper makers would be proud of and then some elements that are absolutely DIY, like my mixer and so the very first time I colored paper, I actually used food coloring. So before I was able to upgrade to the nice paper making dyes, before I was able to spend the money I needed to get a beater, it was a pretty basic setup. It was a vat on my dining room table, my mixer very slowly creating pulp for me, and <laughs> a mold and decal that my fiance, who was my boyfriend at the time, very kindly made for me because I don't think I could have made that myself. That's amazing that he hopped in to help you with that because I know that that never goes underappreciated for when any of us have partners or significant others that are willing to jump in the fray and be like, you know what? It's cool if you have the vat on the dining room table. We didn't really need to eat at a table <laughs> anyway. It's like, we can use the couch or let me make this decal to help you pursue your love of this craft and to get things running. So at the beginning, besides the challenge of not having everything to like professional standards, quote unquote, what was the hardest thing for you when you started diving into this process and making paper? Ooh, for me, it was definitely consistency. One thing about handwritten paper making is that you can make paper pretty easily, but getting a high quality product time and time again is actually pretty difficult because like I said, Every part of the process, if there's a little change to it, it can change the outcome of the paper. So the fiber blend, if you, it's not beaten properly. So I have a professional Hollander beater that instead of chopping my fibers like a mixer does, it grinds them. So you have to put your fibers through that beater for approximately four to five hours, depending on what fiber you have. And if it's not consistent if you don't make sure that the end result that's coming out of that beater is the same texture. It could have a huge effect on your surface finish. It could have a huge effect on how thick your paper is. So it took me a lot of trial and error and a lot of diligence more than anything to figure out how to make good paper and how to make it consistently. So one batch like in your beater, this, like to me, this is like baking cookies. Like how many <laughs> would you, how many like pieces of paper would you get from that? Like how often do you have to repeat the process for like a hundred sheets of paper? Um, it really depends on the size of the paper, but the most common size that I make is A7, five by seven. Mm -hmm. And typically I can get around 200 pieces of paper from one beater run. So it's becoming actually for me something like, Every day I have to rerun that beater to keep up with the volume of paper that I need to make. And there is definitely a point down the line where I'm going to have to upgrade to an even bigger beater. Right now I can handle about some 
two pounds of paper and there are some beaters that can go up to 10, 15, 20 so that you only really need to make your batch of pulp once a week or something like that. So I'm looking forward to that day. But for now, my trusty little beater does its job every day or every other day. (laughs) (laughs) This is fascinating. And I'm actually really starting to see the connection between the science side of your brain and the handmade paper. Cause I'm like, Oh my goodness, the consistency, the recipe, the trial and error. This is a lot more systematic and scientific than I would have thought because we're like, Oh, it's creative, you know? And I'm like, no, this and is I've like only a, a recipe. Scratched the surface. I myself have only scratched the surface and I've been doing this for more than two years. Um, there's just so many fibers out there. There's so many additives to change the quality of the paper that I have yet to explore. Luckily, for me, I create paper for the wedding industry for my own letterpress since I letterpress in house as well. And the paper for that is typically a little easier to make because you're trying to get it to be fluffy, you're trying to get it to be, you know, uneven so it has that like nice texture and deckled edges. But there's so many very thin pieces of paper or very textured pieces of paper that, you know, seasoned paper makers still struggle to make. And I just am not there yet. And it's something that's totally normal. I'm going to have to continue experimenting, continue getting better at paper making, but there's a lot to explore. People dedicate their entire lives to just the science behind it. Timothy Barrett, he's a huge name in the paper making industry. He's a professor and all he does is research about papermaking about the science behind it. And it's fascinating how much he has learned and how much he talks about he still has to learn. Hmm. I am like just so impressed with you right now. I just got to say, I'm like, you know, Elizabeth, you know when I just get really excited about things? I am having one of those moments right now. I'm like, oh my gosh, because I'm just thinking about how your creative work to literally start with like pieces of fiber and you like go through the entire process. Like your stuff is literally built from the ground up and it is so fascinating like you make the paper you let it press and then you design them all in-house and I'm just like mind blown right now because I would literally lose my mind trying to do that and I'm just so impressed like I just think that's the coolest thing ever and I'm like I'm just so excited for you okay let me just calm down (laughs) for me it's about doing it all myself and for some people that's not great like I know Outsourcing is extremely important. It helps you uh, focus on what is important to you. But for me, there's just something extremely satisfying about saying, hey, I crafted this paper. I made the recipe for this paper. I then made the paper. I designed what's going to go on the paper. And then I put that design on the paper. And it's just, it's really part of what gets me excited every day. It's what makes me excited to learn new things, excited to do better at all of the little pieces that make the whole. Hey guys, you know, we share a ton of free, helpful info here on the podcast, but if you're looking to go deeper, you need our business sense for creatives bundle. This is our foundational resource. We share it all our pricing strategies, marketing plans, our favorite print partners, real life examples of our invoices and workflows, and so much more. Literally, it is amazing. (laughs) It really is the comprehensive guide for a money-making creative biz. So with the bundle, you'll get access to our three webinar replays, Pricing with Purpose, How to Be Confident When It Comes to Charging Your Worth, People in Publicity, How to Find Clients and Deliver an Awesome Experience, and lastly, Productivity and Processes, How to Run Your Business Efficiently and Get Crap Done. And not to mention, you'll also get our three bonus PDF party favors. What, what? Um, We've heard from (laughs) students that these are worth the price of it alone. So the party favors are pricing FAQs, the SEO cheat sheet, and a mini favorite vendor's guide to get you started on where to print invitations. So just to clarify, that is not only three awesome video recordings, but three bonus PDFs as well that support the content from the videos. So I think it's a pretty good deal. Totally. It's the best deal out there. And you have lifetime access to it, which also adds to the whole value. So (laughs) woohoo! don't take it from us, though. Take it from the hundreds of students who have learned from the bundle and have said that these were the best, most real and informative webinars that they've ever watched. We've seen students double their prices after watching these and totally skyrocket their businesses. 
This is our roadmap of how we got to where we are today, so skip the mistakes and speed bumps, doing it the slow way, and let us put you on the fast track to running a creative biz like a boss and pricing for profit and not just pay. And the best part, this resource is less than $100. Seriously, y'all, it's only $97 and it's so worth that price and much more. So go to bizbirthdaybash.com forward slash bundle to purchase it today. Mm, I, yeah, I'm just like so glad you're our first guest of this year because I was needing some major inspiration. <laughs> and now I'm being like inspired to dive into what I really love. And to explore some new things too, I feel like I could totally see how this would be addicting for someone and how they would dedicate their entire life to it. Like that doesn't surprise me in the least. So for our audience, just to understand a little bit about why handmade paper is priced the way it is, obviously it comes with a higher price point. It's entirely handmade in every single way. So how time consuming is it really? Like if you're making a batch of 100 A7s from start to finish, the pulp, the molds, the pressing, the drying, all of that, how long is that going to take you? It is so hard to quantify that because a lot of it is not really quantifiable, right? First, there's the fact that I have figured out how to make good paper and that in itself is lots and lots and lots of effort. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when you pay for an artist, you're paying not only for the art, but you're paying for their experience. And I think paper making is no exception. And the materials are very expensive. The hydraulic press you need to properly press your paper is very expensive. The beater is very expensive. So there's those costs. But mm -hmm. to make the batch of paper, Technically, from start to finish, it's about two days because that's how long it takes to dry. But active time, there is getting the beater ready. There is letting the beater run for four to five hours so that the pulp is properly made. Then there's coloring the pulp. There's adding the additives to make sure that the paper turns out exactly how you want it to turn out. Then there's the actual process of making the paper. You know, when you have your hands in the vat, in water, making all those sheets. Then you have to bring it to the press room, press all the water out, transfer each sheet, for me at least by hand, into my dry box, let it dry. And once it's dry, I have to count and sort them to make sure that there's no blemishes that aren't like too bad because of course handmade paper is imperfectly imperfect mm -hmm. or perfectly imperfect rather. <laughs> so some blemishes are okay, but still there's a little bit of me that's like, oh, you know what? That one's a little too blemished. I, I would not sell that. So I have to, I touch each piece of paper at least four to five times before it gets listed on the site or before it gets shipped out to a customer. So a lot of it is not even really making the paper. It's set up and it's processing time after the paper has been made. I am looking at the box of handmade paper from you behind me on my shelf right now. And I really have the urge to just grab it and give it a big hug because <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, it's precious stuff. And mm -hmm. it's almost like a little part of you. Like I, that's so crazy to me just to hear you say that you touch each piece five to six times. Like I never would have thought of it in that terms before. And it's like you're giving a little piece of your heart to every single batch of paper that you're producing. And it really is so precious. I'm going to try not to get emotional. <laughs> oh <my gosh>. <laughs> paper, it's, so much, it's so much more special than people realize. Um, so shifting gears just a little bit. So your business is very multifaceted with doing invitations, products, and handmade paper. Would you say that the handmade paper is like the majority of your business revenue or what is really like the big driver of your business? Currently, it is definitely the handmade paper. So Amazing. like I said, <laughs> I, I started in December of 2018. So technically, my business has just hit two years. I have not been in business for very long. And it wasn't until March of 2020 that I decided that I wanted to advertise more for stationery and invitations. And of course, you know how 2020 went. So <laughs> yeah, you picked quite the time to start um, advertising invitations. <laughs> I did. I really did. And I decided in July of 2020 that that would be the best time to quit my corporate job and do this full time. So it was just a huge 
storm of bad timing, but lots of motivation and lots of self-confidence. Um, I had hoped that in 2020, it would be about 50-50. It would be stationary 50% with handmade paper 50%. But I think that new goal is for 2021 and 2022, which is totally fine. Like I got to really spend time working on the back end of my business in 2020. I got to do a lot of marketing. I got to do a lot of accounting. I got to do a lot of website design and just stuff that normally people have to hire out or don't have time to do. I was able to really focus on 2020 along with getting even better paper. I love your semi-custom suites. I just have to say that because of course yesterday while I was putting questions together and preparing for things, I was totally stalking your Instagram and your website all over. And I was looking at your suites and I was quite honestly, if I were to get married again today, I would be coming to to you. <laughs> Thank you. Because I think the finesse of your art is so stunning, not to mention the fact that you're also letter pressing into this paper yourself. So you have the ability to not only make the handmade paper, but to letter press on it. And so I think that's really great for your business model going forward, quite honestly, to have all of those things paired together because. There is nothing more annoying for us as stationers, I think, and for people as customers to have to go to a million places. And a lot of time that is the case. Um, But for somebody to come to you to get not only the handmade paper look they want, but also to get the letterpress, which pairs just perfectly, is such a great offering. Like, I think that's really unique because quite honestly, I can't think of anybody else who does that. So actually, maybe you would know if someone else makes handmade paper and letter presses it, but I can't think of anybody. Lauren from Farmet Co. does. Um, okay. She focuses more on products rather than printing and paper for customers. Very recently, she made the switch to more of a product-based business. But yeah, Lauren does. And it's fabulous to see her side of paper making because she focuses on natural dyes and very, very organic edges. It's a completely different piece of paper from what I create. And it's Mm -hmm. so fascinating for me to see another paper maker create something completely different. And I like still drool over all of her stuff whenever I see it because it's just so gorgeous. Yeah. Well, that's how I feel about your stuff. Like literally I was looking through (laughs) Instagram and I was like, well, and I see handmade paper that I really love or just like really beautiful sweets. My first thought is I want to eat that. I don't know Mm -hmm. what that is, but I was just like, man, I just want to eat her whole Instagram feed. I know that sounds really weird, you guys. I understand that. Okay. It's confident. I want to eat your work. Anyway, so that being said, where do you find your inspiration for your sweets and your products and all, all your beautiful creations? Like what are you most inspired by? I have always been a very avid gardener, and I think it comes from my dad's side of the family because they are also all huge gardeners. And for me, it's always been and always will be flowers, English gardens, old world romanticism that really drives everything I do because there is nothing that gets me more excited than a pretty flower in my garden, truly. It's one of the things that five years from now, five, 10 years from now, I'm working towards. I really want to be able to create a flower farm somewhere that creates natural dyes that I can then use in my own paper. And it's a pipe dream. It's going to happen at some point. I just don't know when or how long it's going to take me to get there. But gardening and just nature in general is a huge, huge motivator behind all of my designs, everything I do. And I think it also influences a lot of my branding because a lot of my colors reflect, you know, the soft, rich pastels of nature, greens, warm tones, peaches. And I just love that vibe. I love that style. I love fine art stationery. And I think it was such a perfect mix for me to be able to create handmade paper, discover that this handmade paper can be used to achieve this kind of stationery, this kind of art. Letterpress also plays so well into that and it all came together very well for me and I love it all so much. Mm. And I know that like all of these vintage the vintage machinery and letterpress and the beater and everything you're pursuing, like you said, 
that stuff is not inexpensive to build a studio to move forward with something like that. And that really shows your passion too. Like I think anyone who's obsessed with their craft is that they're like money for me is almost not an object. I will do what I has to take to get those things into my studio so that I can play with them and experiment with them. And my goodness, you might just be the most romantic person ever because the gardening, I was also like, oh my God, (laughs) this is the best. And now I want to see photos of her garden. And I was like, when COVID, when we have mostly finished COVID and all of that, I think I might have to force a visit upon you. Not going to lie. Um, <laughs> We're coming early. over. No big deal. It's a tour, like everything you're doing. I mean, I honestly feel like there are so many people that I've been able to connect with on Instagram that I would say in a minute, I would be more than happy to meet with like in person, you know, because now I just like find myself so curious about just everything you're doing. I feel so inspired. (laughs) You are absolutely welcome. And I'm going to warn you that it's beautiful on some levels, but it's also a complete disaster on others because paper making is a mess. It is an absolute (laughs) mess. My basement is actually dedicated to paper making. That's my paper making space. That's where my press, my beater, all of that is. And it is, it's a disaster like 90% of the time until I clean it like once a month. Right. Oh yeah. No worries in terms of, in terms of like being a mess because that's Beautiful truly, mess. <laughs> yeah, that's truly the sign of like that something magical is happening. Yeah. If the studio is clean. No one's been in it doing anything. So. <laughs> I would not expect that at all. I feel like I'm having like totally a Michael moment from the office when he books himself a trip to Florida. Sakshi, have you seen the office? I have. When okay, it's when um is it Joan? Who's the woman who has like the two massive dogs and Joe, yeah. Joe from Saber and Michael is like, I bought two tickets to Florida and she's like, Oh Michael <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's gonna be me. I'm gonna be like Sakshi, I bought my ticket to see you and you're gonna be like, Oh well <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh um, yeah. Go ahead, Cami. If you, had I a was just going to say too. Um, in terms of timing, I feel like you grew your business so quickly over basically two years at this point. I mean, you said you kind of started in 2018, uh-huh. um, but like the level that your business is at it just seems so much further. Because I know, like two years in, like my what I was producing like wasn't like super great. I don't know. It's just like you, you've like seemed like to have skipped a lot of steps in terms of experience. So, were you doing like? a lot of creative work before um, you, I know you kind of like started your business not too long ago, but were you doing creative work while you were like in college and all that kind of jazz? That's what I'm trying to get at. I know we're going back (laughs) to the beginning, you guys, but I'm just like, what is happening right now? (laughs) Cammy's weird way of asking how in the world are you so talented? (laughs) (laughs) Um, In college, in college, I lettered a lot. I got a start doing some creative work in college, but I never really planned to drop engineering, to drop programming and do a completely creative business, to be honest, until 2019, until last year. And I think that my business is doing well because of my love of Instagram, because of my understanding of Instagram, I think. Mm -hmm. Um, I was able to use that platform pretty well early on to grow and to get my product out to people. And I think that is a huge reason behind why it might seem like it's been quite fast because I got lucky with Instagram, but I also figured out how to use it well, I think. Um, The other side of things is something I mentioned earlier. I really like doing things right the first time. So Mm -hmm. I was lucky to have a nice corporate programming job where I was able to, for two years, not spend any money on myself just spend it all on growing the business, buying Mm -hmm. a letterpress, buying good paper making equipment, learning how to use it all. And I really, really focused on getting stuff right the first time, learning everything properly the first time so that I was properly equipped to make the stuff that I wanted to make. Because I knew early on, you know, I was aspiring to a certain level. I'm going to throw out a couple names of Stationer is Shasta Bell, for one. The Design House of Moira, for another. 
Michaela from Ink Press and Co. Like all of those styles I saw and I was like, hey, I want to be an artist like them. So having that goal made it easier for me to work towards it and work towards it quickly. Mm -hmm. I think, I think you had such a clear viewpoint from everything you have said. You had a very clear view of where you were going. And I think this should really speak testaments to people who, who are trying to figure that out, right? That if you pinpoint your sight on something and you take the steps to get there, you can get there really quickly. And the fact that you were like, I'm going to do this right the first time. And of course I'm going to make mistakes and I'm going to mess up, but I'm going to dedicate myself to this. Growth can come with that really quickly as well, as well as staying organized within the way that you run your business. I mean, you're your testament to that 100% and the fact that you can work around what everyone considers to be an awful Instagram algorithm, right? (laughs) You still figured out how to make it work for you. And I think you really plugged yourself into the industry too, in terms of networking with people that you knew would need your handmade paper. I mean, I have kind of seen that through obviously my friend Rebecca referring me to you. Mm -hmm. And that word of mouth is one of the strongest things that you can have. Um, And so one of my questions for you was, how have you most effectively marketed yourself and your business? And of course, you talked about Instagram a little bit, but any other insight you could share would be awesome. Absolutely. So I'm going to take a quick second to shout out um, Shana from Iris and Marie Press. She, Mm -hmm. in early, early 2019, was my very first custom handmade paper order. And I think that her showing off my paper um, really helped a lot of other stationers find me, connect with me and discover, you know, custom handmade paper is a thing. There's other paper makers out there rather than the big names who are also making paper. So huge shout out to her. I owe a lot to her, but I think (laughs) something else that really helped me was getting my paper out to people as quickly as possible. And early on, I sent out a lot, a lot, a lot of free sample packs of my paper so that people could touch it, feel it, write on it. I use a fiber blend that is relatively pointed pen friendly. I do make specifically letterpress paper, and then I also make calligraphy paper. And I think a lot of calligraphers who have only had access to very soft pieces of paper, when they got my paper, they realized, oh, there's paper out there that is actually easier for us to write on, but still gets that look of handmade paper of deckled edges for Mm -hmm. calligraphy pieces. And I think that helped as well. Early on, I really marketed towards calligraphers and making thin pieces of paper that are easier to write on rather than uh, fluffy letterpress papers. So you mentioned Shasta earlier, who I'm pretty good friends with as well. And I totally admire her 100%. I was like, totally starstruck when I actually got to talk to her on the phone the first time. (laughs) Has she used any of your paper yet? I'm just curious. She actually hasn't. And Shasta, if you're listening, please use my paper. I'll send you some. I'm going to connect the two of you. Yes. This is going to be yeah. my fairy godmother moment where I'm like, bippity boppity boo. Um, and yeah. I am going to do an email thread or something. Paper matchmaking. Like, yeah. <laughs> I have actually talked to Shasta a couple of times on Instagram, but it's it's been more like, a, hey, I love your work. Yes. This is beautiful. This thing you created is beautiful. <laughs> and it's so funny too that I've realized this creating like Instagram friendships, right? Or people ask me, how did you meet so-and-so? And And I'm like, I met them on Instagram and like Kelsey Kelly. And now I have been with her in person multiple times to do different things. We have become real life friends. And I think that behind it all, it's like everyone else is just human too. You know, Mm -hmm. we get totally starstruck. And then we, and then we talk to someone and break down those walls from social media and realize that everyone's maybe struggling in their business the same way as us or having similar successes or downfalls or whatever it may be. And so I love that you are also giving shout outs to people just to like say thank you. That also makes me emotional. <laughs> <laughs> this is just an emotional episode, you guys. <laughs> uh, I'm just a mushy blob because this whole interview is making me remember like why I love the stationary industry so much. Makes you want to play 
the Taylor Swift album on repeat and just like <laughs> frolic around. <laughs> oh, we're just all starstruck by each other. It's like the cutest thing in the creative industry. We're all just like, oh my god, I love you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you might tell someone like, I'm totally starstruck, and they're like, Well, I'm starstruck by you. And then it's just like a big pile of love, basically. Um, yes. Love when that happens. <laughs> yeah, and Valentine's Day is right around the corner. And I just want to throw like heart confetti into the oh, air. Yeah. I was thinking, I was like, should this come out around Valentine's Day and be like a love story? <laughs> <laughs> Possibly. Oh, no, I think we had it slated for early February. Yeah, so close enough. Close enough. <laughs> close enough. Everyone, consider this the official Valentine's Day episode. Happy Valentine's Day. <laughs> Okay, Sakshi, see, I told you we were going to have tangents at some point. We will weave our way back. And I wanted to talk a little bit about your branding because you said earlier that gardening really plays into that. But I'd love to know a little more about the thought process behind it as well as your website because your website is so simplistic and beautiful and it does something really well that I think as stationers were really bad at. And that is that it uses very minimal copy (laughs) because I think stationers like we want to explain the nuance of every single tiny little thing that goes into the process and what we do. And I was like, wow, Sakshi has done such a good job of keeping this very concise and brief. And so I would love to hear about it, um, your website specifically a little bit. And then I'm also curious what platform you built it on because I love the behind the scenes stuff, if you're willing to share. Yeah, absolutely. And a lot of the website is me and my fiance working together during the pandemic to get a site up. I did have a Shopify site up until last year. And I recently switched over to Squarespace in December. So the site that you're seeing now has only been up for about a month and a half at this point. Um, And it's all done by me and my fiance. And maybe that's why there's not a lot of copy on it, because we really put a focus on making it easy for people to see my semi-custom suites, to get the information that they need, to quickly request a proposal or request a consultation. And we wanted it to be bare bones because one problem that I've seen with a lot of sites is that navigation is tricky or there's too many pages. There's Mm -hmm. a lot of stuff that people have to sort through in order to get to where they need to go. Um, So we kept it fairly simple. There's a couple of main pages. There's a couple of inquiry pages. And other than adding in photos and my branding colors, There's not much else. And we're pretty happy with that. I think that it's always going to be a work in progress since we dedicate whatever time we have left over throughout the week to upgrading it a little bit. So it might never be done. It might never be as polished and perfect as um, a platform that is designed by a copywriter and a website designer. But (laughs) I love it all the same. I'm very, very happy with it. I think it really does reflect me and my love of warm peachy tones of greenery of flowers and it's been great so far I've really been thankful for the upgrade since December I promise I'm not lying when I tell you that I think your website is phenomenal (laughs) (laughs) like I really do because that minimalism aspect is you really hit it spot on. You provided just enough information that people needed. And when you've talked about gardening and everything, those peachy tones and greenery, like it speaks to me as you so much now getting to learn about you a little more today. So everyone who's listening, just take a little mental note that you don't have to make your website a million pages to be effective because what I have seen for Inquisited um, has been... I think amazing. And I think there's something too to be said in terms of like luxury high end market, which you have to cater to a little bit with handmade paper because it's more expensive. Mm -hmm. But minimalism in that is key. People just want to come and be wowed by visuals and they want to go, that's what I want. And they want to inquire and have a conversation and get it basically. They want it to be easy. So you're not making people jump through any hoops. And I think that's great. So (laughs) thank you. Yeah, It's nice to hear that all of the work we put in, because it took weeks, man, in December. It took a very, very long time to get what we have up. So it's really nice to hear that it's paid off. So thank you very much. Yes. 
You're welcome. I think I'm your number one fan. <laughs> Making the transition from Shopify to Squarespace, I think, was a really good move for you as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's just so limiting. Like Shopify yeah. was great when I was focusing on just oh, selling that's... the paper I was making, but um, Squarespace gives a lot more customization because I know that I'm capable of doing it myself as well. If you aren't capable of doing it yourself, Shopify is great because there's not much you can screw up. It's all kind of there for you. But Squarespace opens up some doors for a little bit of creativity, a little bit of customization, which I really appreciated. Mm -hmm. So are you guys in like full-blown developer mode on the back end then where you're kind of like customizing a lot of stuff yourself? Because it definitely does not look like a Squarespace template to me, which is a compliment by the way, because it was not obvious to me. A lot of times you go to sites and you're like, oh, this is Squarespace (laughs) because there's, you know, a limited amount of templates people can use. So I'm assuming you guys were going in on the back end and like tweaking a lot if you had been working on it. Yeah, my um, uh, my computer science degree came into handy for one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we're both engineers. We both graduated from the same university for engineering. So we had the skills necessary to mess with the back end, to mess with the code a little bit. And we're still going to mess with it more, but it definitely made it easier for us to get the look that we wanted pretty quickly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's really lovely. Um, And you can notice that my fiance helps a lot in so many aspects of my business. So while we're on the thank you train, I will also thank him because so much of what I do (laughs) and how quickly I I was able to do it, you know, like I said, in two years, I was able to get from there to here is because of him. So thank you very much, Matthew. Yeah, we appreciate you. (laughs) I think for so many of us who are able to put our best foot forward, we always have someone for the most part behind the scenes, who's backing us up and supporting us. And, you know, that's, and it's not always the case, but a lot of times that person is present in there. And I, I feel totally the same way to be so fortunate to have a husband who encourages me to pursue what I love. And even yesterday was trying to help me code something on the back end of my site that was giving me total fits. Oh. <laughs> <He was> like, <laughs> Let me log in and see if I can do it for you. And he uh-huh. does data analytics. So a little different from website coding, but he was still willing to try to help. And uh-huh. that just goes a long way. I think in our morale as creatives, right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> to get everything done. Okay. So We're coming close to the end here, even though really I could talk to you for hours, um, just questions upon questions, but we kind of wanted to end the interview by, we touched on this a little bit, like how 2020 reshaped your business. So if there's anything else about how 2020 did reshape your business, feel free to share. But the biggest question to end kind of all of this is what do you want to do more of in 2021 and what do you want to do less of? I think that I want to focus more on design. The thing about papermaking that I love is crafting a different piece of paper, a different look, a different mixture of fibers. So when I'm making paper for other creatives, I'm usually using the same letterpress formula or the same calligraphy formula. It's when I have custom clients or when I have invitation clients who really want to experiment with their paper that gets me super excited because it brings me back to the science aspect of it, of how am I going to use my tools and use different fibers to achieve the look in the end. So I really would love to focus more on invitation suites, more on really special custom papers. One of my favorites is doing petal papers, even though they're so finicky. Like sometimes the petals work great. Sometimes they come out of the dry box and they're purple instead of pink or, you know, funny (laughs) stuff happens. But it's so fun to work with those natural ingredients, seeds, adding fun threads or gold flakes. And I think that's where a lot of the excitement comes from. Um, So I definitely want to focus more on designing both invitation suites and designing custom paper this year, rather than just fulfilling stock orders, essentially. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can totally understand that in terms of finding ways to fulfill yourself creatively, you know, otherwise it can turn into feeling a little bit like a machine yeah. <laughs> and you're like, mm-hmm. I have to reclaim my humanity a little bit. How can I back up and be creative and spend some time on myself mm-hmm. and do the things I love? So 
the reason I asked that too is because I'm learning so much about like mindset. And I think there's something really powerful about putting something out into the world and telling other people what we want, because that helps us just achieve things, I think a lot more. And then when people hear that, they, they come to you potentially with those things that you want to. So Anyone needs a uh, design and handmade paper, Sakshi is totally your girl. <laughs> I know. I'm so excited to see what you come up with and create next. I'm just like so excited right now to watch you all through 2021. Yeah, I know. stalking the background, you know, <laughs> up on your doorstep, ringing the doorbell. It's going to be fun. <laughs> I feel like we uh, – No one knows that story, so now it's <laughs> really weird. <laughs> oh, guys, everyone's going to be like, Kimmy is psychotic <laughs> all the time. <laughs> Oh, it's fine. No. I know. Okay. I feel like we need our own version of um, what's the stationary magazine, Cami, that gets published quarterly? Stationary trends. Yes, I feel like we need our own version of that. That's like ten up and coming artists to watch, and it oh like, yeah, Shotzi, Versace, <laughs> sorry, and all the other <laughs> wonderful people on that list. <laughs> I know, brilliant idea. I love it. Let's actually, never mind. I was about to say let's do it, but no, I'm not going to do that to ourselves anyway. Versace, <laughs> tell everyone where they can find you and how they can get handmade paper from you, and just follow you for all the fun things. Yep, I'm inquisited on everywhere. You can find me on Instagram, um, inquisited, inquisited.com. I do have a Pinterest that I'm really working on building out this year as well. That's also inquisited. Um, and yeah, I'm usually very responsive through DMs. I'm also very responsive to email inquiries. So anywhere you can find me, you should be able to reach me pretty quickly. Yay, that is wonderful. Thank you so much. And if you have any last imparting thoughts for our audience, feel free to say them now. If there's one thing that you could tell our audience just creatively or personally, what would it be? I know I'm totally putting you on the spot, but oh no, worries. I'm sure you have something amazing to say. <laughs> Absolutely. I think that 2020 taught us more than anything. It's about perse perseverance. It's about lifting each other up. And I'm extremely thankful to the stationary industry as a whole, the wedding industry as a whole, for how supportive we've been. A lot of my time last year, I was spent doing styled shoots because everybody didn't have weddings to do. So they were collaborating and creating no matter what. And I think 2021 is looking better. And I know it's going to be better, especially with you guys and everybody else supporting each other. So thank you for all the support that I've already gotten. And I hope that we continue that collective community throughout this year and whatever may happen this year. Amazing. Absolutely oh. perfect. <laughs> I am just so thrilled once again that we got to have you on the podcast to talk about handmade paper and all the things which you're clearly so passionate about and I find myself just even more motivated after talking to you just to dive into things that I love more and just to create an experiment for the sake of, of creating, you know, just to like get out there and try something new and change it up and yeah, investigate myself. And <laughs> investigate. that is like the word, if I'm taking one word from this episode, investigate is the word. It. That word. should be your 2021 word of the year. <gasps> Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh it's all happening it's all happening in this episode <laughs> all right everyone thank you once again for tuning in to the biz birthday bash podcast if you could please leave us a rating and a review on itunes that would mean the world to us it helps other creatives in the industry find us and get connected um just so that they know that there's other people out there like them experiencing these things and going through all the things that creatives experience on a daily basis. And if you have a question for us, please make sure to go to bizbirthdaybash.com. If you scroll down to our footer, there's a little button that says Q and cake. You can click that and you can drop a question on that page for us. And then in the future, we might answer it on a Q and cake episode or make a full entire episode for it because that has been happening recently too, because some questions cannot be answered <laughs> in just a few minutes. So yeah, y'all come at it with the questions. So <laughs> keep them coming. <laughs> I know for sure. I feel bad because there are, uh, we would have to probably answer 10 or 15 every single episode to get through all of them. But you guys seriously submit the best ones and makes us so happy that you guys continue to stay engaged. So we are excited to see you guys 
next week via the podcast. And once again, happy Valentine's Day because happy <laughs> we're love day. this episode of Valentine's Day, y'all. <laughs> Yes. And thank you so much, Sakshi, for joining us today. It was obviously a super inspirational episode and we're just thrilled to have you. So thanks everyone. And we'll see you next week. Bye. Thank you. (laughs) Bye. Hey there, fellow stationers. Are you creating custom invitations and still sending a lackluster contract that's hacked together with Google searches and generic templates? We've got you. We've created a custom stationary contract written for stationers by stationers, and it is lawyer reviewed and approved. Hashtag legal rockstar. The custom stationary contract template covers every stationary snafu, protects you and your client's interests, and sets up an expectation of professionalism. We've combined our previous contracts as well as years of experience to bring you a contract that covers your booty and your biz. Become a put together pro and breathe a sigh of relief knowing that you have a contract that is easy to understand and avoids confusing legal jargon. The custom stationary contract template is only $297, which is much less than what you can expect to pay anywhere else. And it's written by two gals who have seen it all. Spoiler alert, it's us. It's time to do things right. Go to bizbirthdaybash.com forward slash contract to purchase and download your copy today. And as a special treat, use code PODCAST2020 to get $20 off. And that's PODCAST, all caps, 2020 to get $20 off. Woohoo!